everybody. Uh, welcome to today's uh, member spotlight. My name is Andrew Keneally. I am WSRI's communications director. Uh, today, we are delighted to speak with Stacy uh, Kohlenhofer, uh, division chair of the Mayo Clinic, which is a longtime member of WSRI. Uh, for those who don't know, the Mayo Clinic is a top-ranked nonprofit American academic medical center known for its innovative treatments, research, and dedication to patient care and employs over 7,300 physicians and scientists, along with 66,000 administrative and allied health staff across campuses in Rochester, Minnesota, Jacksonville, Florida, as well as Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona. In her role, uh, Stacy oversees self-insured liabilities, including workers' compensation, short-term disability, FMLA, and other employee disability programs. Stacy. Uh, good morning and welcome uh, to today's member spotlight. Uh, with every member spotlight we do, we ask four questions. Uh, so I'd like to just jump right into it and uh, ask, how did you first learn about WCRI? Well, um, I learned about WCRI many years ago. So, you know, you indicated that the department that I am in, we oversee occupational, short-term, long-term, the disability benefits from Mayo. But one of the other things that we do is we assist some of the patient-facing departments with anything occupational related. So we're a medical provider, so they're very concerned about reimbursement rates. So we had been receiving um, questions from the revenue cycle, you know, if they were being paid correctly, incorrectly. Um, Patients come from all over the United States to Rochester, Minnesota for um, many ailments, including occupational injuries. So we had a lot of states telling us that um, they could only uh, pay us their fee schedule. We couldn't balance bill, all of that. So we started researching, you know, to see exactly what states had fee schedules, what states didn't have fee schedules. So the WCRI provided a lot of a lot of great knowledge for us. Um, we were able to, you know, kind of right the wrongs. We were able to come up with, um, um, you know, some contracts with other states, things like that, that we could enter into just to make sure that we were being reimbursed reasonably. Um, so that that was the very first time that, that I had been uh, aware of WCRI. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And I guess throughout, so I guess how many years have you been a member at this point uh, in terms of an estimate? Oh, probably 15, I think. Right. And through those 15 yeah. years, what, what value do you derive uh, from being a WSRI member? Obviously, the beginning was uh, looking for information about fee schedule, but how has that developed over the last 15 years? Well, um, the benchmarking has just been incredible. So what I really like about it is, you know, we get our, we, we get the Minnesota report, but in that report, it's showing us um, the other states. So since we have a presence and a business in Arizona and Florida and Wisconsin, we're able to see, you know, how we're stacking up with the other states that we do business in. Um, I love to be able to look at some of those metrics like for Arizona and say, oh, we're not there. That's not us. You know, we don't we don't right. have that high yeah. rate or whatever. So I like to be able to look at it all in one snapshot. Right. And and that's what we're able to do. And I think what you're saying is what we hear from a lot of our members, especially of our, our employer members, is comparing their internal results uh, to what you know the state average is. So that's fantastic. And, right. and and what is your favorite W Shri study or researcher? Obviously you just talked about some fee schedules and uh, some of the Comscope benchmark studies. Uh, what is your favorite WSRI study? Well, I do, I do um, very intently read the Comscope when it comes out, and actually, our Minnesota one is in a couple of weeks, so I'll be reading that, um, and I get the best value out of that. But I also like the long-term COVID report that I received a couple of years ago. I thought that was very interesting, and and hopefully there will be more. You know, as long term COVID evolves and right. resolves, hopefully we'll be able to see, you know, what more outcomes are in that regard. 
I hear that. So it's a combination of liking the, the annual benchmarking reports, right? Tracking uh, maybe sometimes subtle developments in the system, maybe impact or reforms, but also these topical studies about some issues that may not be around forever, but obviously need uh, to be researched right. to, so we understand it better. Uh, and they make, they make an impact. They yeah. definitely make an impact, right? Glad to hear it. And so our last question is, can you describe a moment when WSRI's research was really helpful? And obviously you've, you've named a couple of them today, uh, but uh, was there a really uh, a moment where it was really helpful? So in addition to, you know, Mayo Clinic being self-insured and self-administered, which is, which is very unique, um, we also have a return to work program. Interesting. So, um, what I find about it's very hard to quantify cost savings with a return to work program um, because you have indirect savings, you have you know some direct savings, but it's that indirect that that is kind of very impactful. So I really have been able to extract some of the QRC and rehabilitation costs in the comp scope, and I've been able to translate that in, in and compare what our program costs are and the value that we provide the institution Mayo Clinic as a result of that return to work um, program. But without those external rehabilitation uh, metrics, it would really be hard, hard to do. Interesting. So yeah. uh, tell me a little bit more about that. So really figuring out what the ROI is in terms of your return to work program. Right. Right, exactly. So the state of Minnesota has uh, regulations as to when you have to engage with the QRC. So, which we do um, for our workers' compensation cases, but we're also providing in-house return to work services to anyone who's ill or injured. So, it's a, if it's a work comp case and you know the regulations haven't kicked in yet, we'll engage in early return to work. Um, where it, we treat a non-occupational injury the same as an occupational injury when it comes to return to work effort accommodations. Um, so we have looked at uh, the average cost per case for rehab uh, for a QRC for with, with, through comp uh, scope. We've applied that to what our average cost per case is. And there is a difference between the occupational and the non-occupational, but we've been able to, um, you know, provide value to the institution. We're able to say, this is what we're saving the institution uh, by not having to go out to an outside uh, QRC. Fantastic. Well, Stacy, thank you so much uh, for some of your great answers and for the opportunity opportunity to interview you today. And from all of us at WCRI, we just want to thank you. Uh, and the Mayo Clinic for your continued support of WCRI and our research. Thank you. I appreciate it.